I talk about that in terms of like our information environment a lot. You know, the the um, the average person who's watching, let's say, four and a half hours of television per day, which is the average figure, which is hard to even imagine people watching that much. That means half the population is watching more than four and a half hours per day. But the average person is living in an information environment, which is really strange environment. And, um, and it's a gigantic changeover from the way the world used to be. And I can, I can remember when I was a child, for example, I lived in a suburb. Well, it was actually kind of rural to begin with. Then it turned into a suburb later on. But it was pre-television. And um, I, re I can remember coming home and, um, and uh, having nothing to do. And so I'd play with the dog or um, I'd go out in the backyard. And uh, eventually I would, sit, I would sink into a kind of a boredom, you might say, or a sort of a, like nothing, nothing to do. And so that... That bottom space of nothing to do was, was in some ways the root of creativity because it's from there that you say, well, I'm going to do something now. I'm going to. I think for the most part now, people and children in particular will just flip on the TV at that point or music. And once you flip on the TV, then you're then you're then what you're experiencing is light going into your eyes and into your brain in the form of images. The images are moving very, very rapidly and they're changing very rapidly. Um, you'll, you may see 20 or 30 edits in an average minute of television viewing. So the information is constantly changing. Um, there's been a lot of research on, the, on, <clears throat> on how awake you are during that experience and mostly, for the most part, you're in a relatively unconscious mode the measurements usually call that um, alpha, you know, which is a kind of a non-participatory accepting mode. That's the only way you can really watch television because if you're if you're in an active mental mode, you really can't let these information. You, you, you'd interfere with the process of receiving the information too much, and you wouldn't get the information. Active mental modes are more associated with reading or conversation or or um, um, doing things. And you, you know, it's, um, you couldn't read and be an alpha, for example. You, that wouldn't work. You have to be in what's called delta, or, or is it beta? I can't remember now anymore. But anyway, so you sit for, so the child, let's say, sits for very long hours receiving information that's sent from somebody else thousands of miles away, very rapidly moving information field. And um, there's been a lot of research on how that causes hyperactivity among kids. People are wondering why there's so much hyperactivity now. And uh, the researchers find that that process of receiving ra rapidly moving information, especially when the information may be violent information or in other ways intended to be stimulating information, um, causes what's called a fight or flight reaction, you know, where you, you want to react to what you're seeing, but, but it's television, so there's no point in reaction. So you, you pull back from the reaction, and then you want to react, and then you pull back, and you go back and forth on this wheel of action-reaction. And um, um, and when the set goes off, then there's this wild bursting out of sort of kinetic energy that has been. And the set goes off, and you're no longer living in an information field which is moving very rapidly, and your mind is no longer receiving these constant images. The room is just there. It's just, it's just there. You know, it's just nothing is really happening. And I think there's a, a sense of kind of um, real desire to get back up to speed, you might say. I, you know, a lot of people talk about television viewing as a drug, and they, they, they like to think of it in terms of it being Valium, but I really think it's speed, because what happens is you're pacified when you're viewing it, although your nervous system is reacting back and forth, 
But um, when the thing goes off, your nervous system is still reacting, but the information field has stopped. And so in some ways, you have to get your system back up to speed. So then you go outside, let's say, and all the cars are moving fast, or you've got a Walkman on, and that's speeding you up. Or if you go out onto, into nature, though, if you go out onto nature, it's barely happening at all. You know, it's very hard to experience grass growing um, or to see the interactions of nature if, you've been, if your whole in- internal system has been sped up. So um, um, I think that for a lot of kids, that, that becomes a very uncomfortable experience. And so they sort of have to get back up to speed and back to the machines, back to the speed. And so the TV set goes back on, and it's, and it's used in that way as a kind of drug. So I think what's happening is that television viewing for children, and to, I think to some degree for adults, is a training for um, more hyperactive inf- lifestyles and hyperactive informational systems and, um, um, and for speeding up the nervous system and speeding up it actually pacifies the mind, but it speeds up the desire to do something else. And, um, and that, that is putting people into a kind of um, emotional, psychological state which makes it impossible to relate to nature. So, I mean, it's, it's concrete alienation again. It's, a, it's internal alienation. Plus, images are going in which stay in and which can't, which can't be got out either. So it's a real uh, heavy impact. And in the modern world, another point is that 70% of this information is controlled by three corpor- is controlled by seven corporations. 70% of global media. And well, that's not only television. That's also radio and magazines and books and movies and and uh, billboards and uh, theaters. 70% of global media is controlled by seven corporations. And um, three corporations control 50% of the 70%. They are AOL Time Warner, Disney, and Fox. And the other four among the top seven are Sony, Viacom, General Electric, and Bertelsmann, I think, now. These people are controlling 70% of all the information that's moving through the world. We have never lived in such an information field before where we're separated from the natural world, so we don't get information that comes from nature very much. We're separated from an alternative Information, information delivered in this medium because the ownership of the medium rarely allows that to appear. And we are sitting and receiving a form of information in which, which is very, very powerful, it comes in the form of images, and once the images go in, they don't come out. They stay. That's, what is that? That's extremely weird phenomenon it's almost science fiction in its, in its implications. It's Big Brother. And yet we're, we think it's perfectly normal. You know, we think it's <laughs> and then we're also living in, a, in, a, in a, a physical universe of cities and cars and technology that we use all the time, and, uh, which, which, makes, which, which, which accelerates the power of this so that single voices can really have dictatorial power.